Hi guys, welcome back. So, today I have a lot that I need to get done, which isn't going to get done, I know it, but um, I can't decide what to do today. I need to get my doodle and sketch video done. I did most of it last week, but I need to get the painting portion done. I got the drawing done a few days ago, um, which is from the painting that she's going to be doing is a little girl blowing bubbles. I don't even know if you can see this or not. It might not even be showing, but anyway. Um, so I've got to do that uh, in watercolor. My problem, though, is that, and somebody else asked me, did you get the correct brushes? The brushes that she uses in the video, she had a a flat brush that was a little bit narrower than this one, like probably like three eighths instead of a half inch. And then she had a narrower brush that looked more like this size, but I got a number two brush. And then she was using a brush similar to this, only um, it was probably a little bit bigger than this size Chinese brush, uh, or it was something along this size. And I'm not sure um, that she uses that. They tell you they want you to use what she used. And how can I if I didn't receive those correct things? And then when I'm watching the video, and I haven't even gotten all the way through her video, and of course it's in Russian, they still don't have their subtitles up yet, but they are working on it. They did say that they're working on getting all of their videos up with English subtitles. It would be really nice if they could do that soon, um, but it's going to require a lot of editing work on their part, I'm sure. Uh, but in her video for the watercolor box, she used seven of these Koi coloring brush pens. We received five. And I don't know what other people received, but these three colors, the blue, green, and yellow, she's not even using in her video. She's using skin tones. So my concern is, is since I'm learning this portrait work and I'm glad I'm learning it on a video, well, of course, I can't understand what she's saying about the video. Um, I'm just going to have to watch her hands. Uh, I'm hoping that she's using watercolor and not just these pens because that's going to be a problem as well. And I probably wouldn't be doing the challenge anyway, so I'm not really concerned by that, but I want to try and use these things. Now, I can probably incorporate these three colors in my bubbles that the little girl is blowing, but um, we'll just see how it goes. And then the stickers were another thing. I was like, why are they giving me all stickers in Russian? They usually give you English, but they didn't this month. So that was odd, too. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and try and work on that. I'm not sure if that's what this video is going to be. We'll just see. My intro is coming beforehand. I want to get back to working on more gouache. I was working on gouache um, the other day, and I'm really enjoying it. Now, I did a lot wrong. And I'm learning from that. I've been watching videos. I've been studying. I've been, um, I, I have a couple online classes through Artist Network TV that I'm going to be um, doing as well. And then I found this guy online. His name is um, Herrera, Carlos Herrera. I saw him on Google+. Plus. He uses these washes. His artwork is phenomenal. Now, I don't know if you can pick, I can get this to pick up because I've got a window shining light. I've got lights all around me. I'm going to shut this off, but I want you to see these. He, his wash, he does these background washes that look, they look semi-opaque, not truly opaque. So they must be very thin. There's no thickness to this. It's very watercolor-like. And then... Even the trees, you can see the background, the darker in the background, is more washed out, and then the lighter colors are more opaque. And I mean, all of this is just beautiful. But he's got these other ones here. There's this one that it, the light, um, you can just feel the warmth of the sun. This one is just amazing. Look at this work. That's all gouache. So I'm going to try to remember to 
post a link to his website or um, at least to his Google Plus page. Look at this waterfall. Oh, to die for. You know, I. that's one thing I like about um, opaque mediums is that the use of white and blues and getting those and yellows and getting those colors of white in your uh, and those shades of white in your um, paintings is just so, so amazing. There's another one. Aren't these gorgeous? They almost look like oil paintings, yet they almost look like watercolor, but they're all gouache. So anyway, I can't wait to get going on more gouache. I just want, I want to do more. And then somebody was asking me about uh, water mixable oils, and if I paint with those, they're actually called water miscible oils. Um, some people call them water soluble oils. They're not really, I wouldn't say water soluble. I think that's kind of a misnomer in how they say that. But um, water mixable, water miscible, water soluble, same, different terms, same paint. Um, I'm going to do some paintings in those too. And I can't wait to get to getting to use those because I want to or do that because I want to use my my new brushes and this these are just the filberts that I bought and I can use these in watercolor um, they're soft enough they are red sable and weasel fur so um, I I do plan on using those I don't use a lot of filberts in my watercolor painting but in oil painting I tend to use more filberts and flats don't ask me why. It's just what I'm comfortable with in each medium. You'll find what you like and what you don't like. So, um, And these were linked in my other video when I was showing you my little art supply haul. So I'm not going to relink those or anything today. But I don't know what I'm going to be doing today. I have no idea. Um, probably either gouache or the watercolor painting with Doodle and Sketch. Whoops, my light's off. Which I need to get done. So... Um, We'll just see how it goes, and it's already 11.30 in the morning, so I'm going to have to get busy. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do. Normally, I do my intro afterward, or as I've already got everything laid out to go. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But anyway, whatever I do, let me know what you guys, are you guys liking? I mean, if I want to learn to do gouache better. And I was doing this this painting the other day, um, which isn't finished. I did a lot wrong with it. It's not. It's unfinished, like I said. But I was working on this water scene, and there's so much wrong with it, and it's done very thickly. And I thought this isn't right. This isn't right at all. So I want to fix it, um, but I'm not sure how to go about that. So that could just be a wasted wasted page, but that's fine. Um, and I'm going to devote that Moleskine book just to gouache. So, um, but there's so much I want to try now that I've seen this other guy's work and how he's doing it. It's just amazing to me. Um, so if you guys are interested in more gouache painting, let me know. I think it's making a comeback. I'm seeing more and more of it out there. And of course, James Gurney, who most people who um, love plein air painting or urban sketching, love to watch James Gurney. And all of his videos are so cool with his little editing effects and stuff. And he has videos on how he does those. And and this guy is just amazing. I love his work as well. Um, he His approach to gouache is a little bit different. Well, a lot different than this guy who who uses the washes in a much lighter way. Now, I've seen another guy on YouTube, I can't remember his name, but he uses the gouache more like an oil painter, although this guy does too. He's got the washes in the background, and then he's got the heavier gouache technique with, with brush strokes that look very much like an oil painter's brush stroke. So I just want to get back into that. So if you're interested in the gouache, if you're interested in the water miscible oils, let me know down below. I would like to hear from you um, and see if there's an interest in it. I know watercolor. I will continue with watercolor. I always will. And I'm going to try to get this doodle and sketch thing done so that I can get that video posted. Um, but we'll just see what happens today. I'm not sure where this intro is going to lead me. So... <laughs> 
Stay Today tuned. I did get my doodle and sketch box in the mail. So I thought that we would go ahead and open it together. Uh, and this is the um, watercolor box. Oops, I almost looked at that label again to see what is in there. I am not going to look at it this time. I'm going to keep my eyeballs away from it. And I'm going to go ahead and... I don't know if I can peel this open. It comes like this with the pretty strings on the outside. Brown paper packages tied up in string. These are my favorite things. Anyway, um, this time I won't sing. And I always wondered how they did that. I should have looked. And we'll take off the box. It says Doodle and Sketch, Inspiration, Artists, Motivation, Workshops, Contests. And this box is amazing. Ooh! Got some stickers that are in Russian. <laughs> Tatiana, if you see this, tell me what these stickers say, if you can read them. I don't know if you can read them or not. It might be too blurry. I'm trying to focus it. And again, their, their card in Russian. I hope they didn't do everything in Russian this time. And I've got this little package. And it says, oh, gift for me. They told me, um, they sent me an email. And they said that they appreciated my review that I did on the box last month. It shocked me. I, I never emailed them about it or anything, but somehow they found it. And they looked me up, and maybe they were just looking on YouTube in general to see who did their reviews. I don't know. That's possible. And they contacted me, and they said, um, we loved your review, and we'd like to send you a free gift. And in the future, if you would like to continue doing these videos for us, we would love to offer you a discounted rate. That was nice of them. So anyway, I'll open that in a minute. We have some yellow colored uh, filler this month. And it looks like we have some markers. The Koi Coloring Brush Pens. They're water-based dye stuff ink. And they're all, it looks like they're in pastel cover, colors. Um, so we'll check those out in just a little bit. And then I got what looks like a protein bar of some sort. I can't tell because it's all in Russian. And then I got another one. Probably a different flavor. I'm sorry, my hands are so shaky. I'm still not feeling well. Um, again, some Kleenex for the watercolors. And another Faber-Castell eraser, which is nice. You never have too many of those. And what is this? I think this is another type of another type of eraser. It is called the Mayped Technique 300. Made in France. And then I got a pencil in just says high grade Brunzeal from Holland. It's an HB pencil which is nice. I like HB and 2H to draw with because I like my pencil lines very light. I got a very fine paintbrush. It's a synthetic Russian number two brush. I think they gave me this last month along with that eraser last month. So I hope I'm not getting a repeat. Um, and then I got this beautiful brush. This one is a number 12. Looks like a wash brush, a mop brush of some sort. That's what it is. And it is very stiff on the end, so I'm going to have to rinse that in order to get it to work. Squirrel imitation. I-M-I-T. That must be imitation. It's going to say, a brush this size would cost probably 40 bucks if it were squirrel. So 
Um, and then I got another bag. Wow, there's so much stuff in here. And this bag is for Van Gogh watercolors. I've used Van Gogh before. They're kind of a student, student level watercolor. Um, I've got Matter Lake Light. Gamboge, um, Sap Green, and this last one is Thalo Blue. So I got four watercolors, five watercolor pens, and then there's this. There is a boatload of paper here. Oh my goodness, there's six, seven, eight sheets of paper, and it is Arches. 300 gram, 100% patent paper. And it's seven and three quarter by 11, which is a strange size, at least in the US. Um, yeah, that's kind of weird. Uh, but no magazine. They did tell me that they were planning on putting their um, their videos with subtitles. They're working on that because there are more and more English speaking uh, people that are watching the videos. So that was everything for the subscription and now I'm going to get into the gift for me from Doodle and Sketch. They go, they go all out with their little tags and stuff like that which is really sweet. Um, I find that really cool that they do that. Oh, something squishy in here. Oh, it's bubble wrapped. I don't know what it is. It's just bubble wrap. I pulled it off. Ah, okay, let me find it. Oh, wow! Oh, wow! These are Rembrandt pastels, and I own the full set. I have the the box of the entire set of pastels down here. Um, I can show you real quick. Early videos that I did was on this. I had gone to a an estate sale, and my husband had seen that they had uh, some pastels for sale and he said I don't know much about it but it sounds like they're brand new and they were this is the first that's just the first layer that's okay um, so there's this one then I've got this one <laughs> then I've got and I haven't used them yet because I was getting back into watercolor at the time then I got this one I guess I did use them. There's a couple in here that I broke. Broke. So there's three levels. I thought there were four, but there's three levels. And so what else did I get in here? I got, they gave me one, two, three, four, five pastels um, in, I got Vert Olive. Not one, Vert Olive, Burnt Umber, nice colors, um, Moose, Ma oh, Mouse Gray, <laughs> uh, Claire Yellow, and let's see what this one is, Carmine. So, and each of these have their their uh, pigment number, their light fast rating, all of that on there so that you can see. Um, this one has three pluses or three stars, three pluses. So anyway, um, this could take me a couple days to uh, maybe longer, I don't know. Um, I do have a video uploading, uploading right now, but I, I've been struggling to get through them. So, um, They'll come when they come, and if you're new to my channel, I'm sorry. Normally, I try to put videos out more frequently, but I've been sick. Every month, 
they have different kind of things. Um, this one, like last month, the reason I got the magazine the video was because it was an artist box is what they called it. So with the artist box, you get those extra things, the, the magazine and all the supplies it took to do their project and then they give the video. Every month um, they do something different. Now it's closed for this month, but um, it says here, um, special series of boxes not from the artists it says right up here and then it says um you could choose from watercolor oil paints or markers i chose watercolor um i would have chose the oils except that i work in water mixable or water miscible oils and i don't like solvents because they give me migraines really bad so um and it just smells up my house so I um, went ahead with the watercolor box, but it says here what's inside the box. It says it's creative task from Doodle and Sketch and the ability to participate in the contest, Dusker. But the other boxes say creative task from the artist or something like that. So if you ever see that, from Doodle and Sketch. That means Doodle and Sketch is providing you just a box like they do with other subscriptions, but there's no artist involved. Just so you're aware of that, I know that one other person was a little disappointed in that, and to be honest, I probably wouldn't have ordered this month's box had I not realized, had I realized what was going on. But I am very thankful to Doodle and Sketch for the five um, beautiful landscape pastels you sent me. I do love pastels and I don't want you to think that I didn't appreciate your gift. I thought it was very nice. Pens. Water-based dye stuff ink. So I'm going to try a couple of things. We're going to start with the blue. Let me grab my little, my new little big brush <laughs> and we'll start with the blue here. I'm just going to Put a small square on a piece of paper. Okay, and then I'm going to take my brush, get it wet, and try to spread this out a little bit. This is a very pale color, um, so I don't know. I feel like it's lifting the ink, but no, there we go. I... Then I'm going to go ahead with this peach color. Maybe this brush is too wet. Let me try it again. I'm going to get a nylon brush. Start again with the blue. And I'm just going to use my Eclipse size 8. Now it still doesn't do a whole lot. Okay, now here's the peachy one, the orangish peach. Maybe it's just because these are um, pale colors, you know? Or maybe they're just meant to work over the top of your watercolor. The yellow is bright. Let's see how that one does. Maybe it'll do better. I bet it will. Oh, yeah. See how the difference? You just need stronger colors is all. Yeah, that's that one works great. So then we've got the green. I'll bet this one will work a little bit better, too. Although it is lighter in value than the yellow is, I believe. Yeah, it works pretty good, too. And then I've got this gold or tan or whatever. 
that one looks deeper too. I'll bet that one will work good too. So it'll just be these other two colors that really don't do a whole heck of a lot. I think the blue is the worst. Try it again. And take it up into this yellow too. The blue is just a weaker pigment altogether. So, anyway, those are the five colors that we got in the brush pens. Um, but they could be great for doing line work. Painting, let me grab a piece of this Arches paper. Very stiff, nice and heavy Arches paper. And I'm going to look up online and see if I can find um, anything on the contest. So let me do that, and I will be right back. Before I get into the painting, though, I want to show you the um, paints. So let me just grab my porcelain dish here. I was so bummed. Somebody was telling me... Um, Oh, you, you should order supplies from Society of All Artists. They're great. They're so good. Their supplies are great. The people are great, yada, yada, yada. So I did. And one of the supplies came last week. It was this new porcelain shell um, palette that I've been wanting for a while. So I went ahead and bought it. They didn't even put it in a box. It was in this flat thing. Didn't sound like it was bubble wrapped. And it was in... A million pieces when it got here. I never even opened it. My mail lady came to the door and she's like, uh, I don't think you want to accept this. And I said, what is it? <laughs> I'm like, is it anthrax? What, what's going on? You know, and she says, this package is broken. I don't know when it broke. I'm so sorry, but um, I can send it back for free if you don't open the box. And I gave it one shake and I'm like, yeah, take it back. I've been contacting Society for All Artists over and over and over, and through Amazon, which is where I ordered it through because I could get it a little cheaper with the shipping and stuff, and no response. So I'm going to have to contact um, um, Amazon again and make a complaint. And I hate to do it. I don't want to complain about anybody, but it's ridiculous. And I'm still waiting on something from December from them. It's February. It's like, hello, I order from Jackson's Art. It doesn't take that long. Why is Society for All Artists so slow? Are they ordering it from Jackson's and then sending it <laughs> to me? I don't know. But anyway, I was not a happy camper when when that happened, so... Okay, so I've got the four colors out. Now these um, pigments, Van Gogh, I believe is, I don't know if this is considered professional or if it's considered student grade. I, mean, I thought it was student grade, but let me check. Yes, yes, they are. They're student, student grade. Now granted, these are good student grade paints. I, I like these better than Cotman, actually, but that's just my personal preference. So, okay, I'm going to take their new little number two brush, which is... They say this light fastness on the yellow. Um, actually, and all four of them are excellent. So... And I'm going to grab the red here, or the rose matter. Hmm. I need a different brush than that. It's too small. Let me get a little bigger one here. One of my others. Let's make an orange in between here. There we go. Then I'm going to grab the green. And 
and the phthalo. I'm going to try and see what will happen if I mix the red and the blue together. This phthalo I'm sure is green shade. It looks like green shade. But we'll see what it does here. They're nice strong pigments. It does give me a purple. Not the best, but it's all right. There we go. Okay, so I have the drawing already done and on the paper that they gave us, those are a couple of the flowers that my husband gave me. He bought me a whole bunch of tulips and those two broke off. So I he put them in that little bitty like shot glass and then put them on my table. It was so sweet of him. He's such a keeper. But anyway, I've got all four colors on a palette. Um, these colors have dried because I put them on last week, but um, they'll be just fine for use. And I'm going to um, mix them up into puddles and then mix my colors with those. Also, I have my markers available. I didn't know what the markers were going to be for until the absolute end, and then I realized that they were for the bubbles um, that I'll be putting in as well. So. I'm going to try to keep that palette as close as I can in camera so that you can see me mixing colors as I do that because I'll only be using these four colors. Um, I've taken this Chinese brush which is similar to the brush that she was using and I'm wetting down all of the um, area around the little girl and the bubbles and I'm going to be negatively painting in the background. going in with some yellow and some sap green and some phthalo blue and I'm just going to be putting that all around the entire background.
Now here I'm just taking a spray bottle and I'm kind of half spraying little speckles onto the paper. You see how it's starting to turn white in different spots. I just wanted to give some texture to the background. Well, I put a little bit of marker there in order to mark some hair so I wouldn't forget and it made a mistake, but I'll be fixing it so it, it, it won't show later. Now I'm just mixing up some skin tones. Um, I'm using some yellow and then a little bit of red, and I'm making kind of an orange color. Um, and I'll add a little more yellow to it, and then later to brown it down a bit, I will add some green into the mix, and that will brown it down. This is actually quite a challenge for me because, as most of you know, I'm, I'm not confident with people, painting people. Um, and so this is my first time doing any skin tones in watercolor um, and having only these four colors to use it as well. Um, so it's a challenge. I'm probably not doing it the way most artists do it, but um, there's a learning curve. So I'm just teaching myself as I go. Arches paper, too, I have to say, when you switch to it after being on non-cotton paper for a little bit, like when I'm working in my sketchbooks and stuff, this paper is so super dry, And if you're familiar with arches at all, and it's so absorbent that when I go to use my brushes, it's like it just skips across the top of the paper. I know a lot of it has to do with the amount of sizing that is in the paper, but um, I have to remember that I've got to keep my brushes extra wet. And actually this is good for me because quite often with um, watercolor papers, I tend to get a little heavy on my brush with the pigment. So having paper that is complementary to that is really helpful for me, 
especially doing these skin tones.
Now you see I just kind of splayed that brush open in order to get kind of a textural effect on the hat and um, I'm going to go back with different colors of brown to put the weaving in as well so you'll be able to see it. And I leave some white of the paper showing as you can see where the highlights are shining off of the edge of the hat, off of the edge of her face, her hands, that kind of thing. Now here I'm just putting in the underside of the hat and making it darker so that there's some shadow going on underneath.
Now I've mixed up some purple with the red and the blue and I'm just painting the um, pattern on her shirt. She had the v-neck with the stripes and then there were like these faint flowers or something really difficult to see in the photo so um, I'm just kind of making the impressions of those and I'm going to use the larger um, Chinese brush to do that with because it gives me more of a dry brush effect. I'm changing my mind here and deciding to change brushes I believe. I think that's what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah there we go. Now, as you can see, this little girl had lots of curly hair. So I started with the lighter value of um, like a brown, and then I'm going in with the darker browns over that and just curling her hair every which way. I'm trying to follow what the photo is, but not exactly. Um, I'm not getting every curl exact, but... Um, I'm going to have to leave some lighter areas where the sun is shining on it and then I get a little heavy handed but then I'll go back later and I'll lighten it back up again. Now as you can see here, um, down by the body of her top and the back of her hair I have um, some green coming in. When On the original photo her elbow doesn't show and she's cut back into the corner quite a bit but I had her over on the paper so I decided to bring the green up around her and kind of give the illusion that she's behind something and that way her arm doesn't need to show.
What I'm doing here is scrubbing a little bit away on the edge of the arm because I want to bring some light out for reflection. Now here I'm starting on the bubbles and it hasn't even occurred to me yet to use those markers for that. The five colors in the markers match the bubbles perfectly and, it, and I don't pick up on that until almost the end. So I'm painting them in by hand but eventually I'll get to it.
here I'll show you the bubbles so that you can see what I'm doing there are multiple colors in the bubbles and all you really have to do is look at the colors and just fill them in just like you see them here's the photo it's gonna be hard to see but you can see all the yellows the blues the pinks purples greens they're all in there so that's just what I'm doing here
Now going around the outside of the bubbles and deepening the value of the colors there is going to help those bubbles pop forward. And later again, I'm, like I said, I'm going to go back and realize that I should have used the markers and that will make it uh, pop even more. But I've decided to go over the entire background again because I think that in certain areas the color really needs to be deepened um, because in the photo it's really dark behind her and also down in that corner so I'm just gonna go ahead and go around everything and do it again but then I'm gonna lose the little speckles that I put in and that's kind of a bummer because you can't put them in once you cover it up there's no white paper underneath to bring up again so um, I lose a lot of that but that's okay So it finally clicked. <laughs> these markers are supposed to be for the darn balloons. And these are all the colors that are in the balloons. So I was not thinking. And I'm now putting them in. That would have saved me a heck of a lot of trouble because I was trying to do it with watercolor. And these are so much easier. When you're doing bubbles, you have to remember to keep, you don't want it white all the way around. You want two colors to close, to, to kind of pop through the edge of the bubbles. And then it kind of fades back in. dry. If it's not dry, i got to wait for it to dry. No, it feels dry. So let's see what happens. I love taking the tape off because it looks like it's framed. You know what I mean? <laughs> so we will see. side had a deckled edge so it looks like I tore the paper but I didn't. This art tape is nice. It's not too sticky. I like it better than masking tape. Okay so that is my finished painting. My first portrait <laughs> in watercolor. So, this is the doodle and sketch for February. And the hearts are just like Valentine's. So, everybody have a great day and try a doodle and sketch box because they're really nice. They're a little expensive, but you get a ton of supplies. And I even find found more that wasn't in that I didn't tell you about, like this sharpening thing for 
sharpening my pencil on and um, there was something else but anyway this is it so have a great day everyone and I will talk to you all soon have courage paint with wild abandon and most of all be kind to each other God bless bye bye